So in this video, we're going to look at the top 10 Microsoft Teams new features coming out. And if you want to see all of them, there's a blog post linked in the description below. I'm Gavin Jones, founder and director at MeTime, where we help organizations save time for their employees to increase well-being or increase sales. Happening to use Microsoft 365 to do that. So if you've got an inkling that you are not being as efficient as you could be with your knowledge workers, then book a call using the link in the description below to see if we can help. Got new videos on Microsoft at work coming out at least every week, so make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified every time one of those comes out. Let's start with number one. So we've got time-based prompts in Copilot in chat. So I can say, what did Lee say last month? So it knows like the time period is basically what is happening in, Co in Copilot now. That's the update. What did Lee say last month? And there's only one chat because we're all on holiday. He said hello there. But if I say summarize uh, discussion from January, you can now give it some natural language time-based prompts. So that's number one of the top 10 new features coming out in August and July. Number two of the top 10 new features is channel cards. So now if you come into a channel and hover over the name at the top, it's going to give us a little pop down card, show us some information. So it tells you the about section if you have bothered to fill that in when you created your channel. Shows you who's in this channel, so saying who can see it. So if it's a standard channel, everyone on the team can see it, but it does show you like Look, there's 15 team members, 14 of them are guests, because this is one we used to run our online program. You can get a link to the channel, and you can get the email address if you want to forward something into that channel. So you could always get that information before, but now it's just a nice little card that pops up. Number three is if you've got annoyed by the Discover feed that now appears at the top. I'm not sure if there'll be much in mind, no suggested post at the moment. But if you've got a vibrant environment, most of my work is done on the client's environments, so I can't show you into those. But um, but yeah, if you have got lots of stuff going through, the Discover tab tries to show you things that you might be interested in, people it thinks you work with, conversations that you think it, it might pop up. Sometimes it can be useful, sometimes people get annoyed with it. So now you can come up to your three dot menu, go to settings, general, and show Discover in your channel list. You can turn that off if you want now to remove another bit of uh, real estate being removed from your screen, if you wanted to. You can always just not look at it as well, I suppose, but if you just really hate it and want to get rid of it, now you can toggle it off. Number four coming out in August is if you are using Teams phone or Teams call center, you can now enable callback for call queues, which uh, as a consumer, I think it's really good. You can now set it so people waiting in the call queue can now receive a callback to their phone number when an agent becomes available, callers become eligible for callback based on conditions that you can configure, such as exceeding a certain wait time, the number of calls in the queue, or the calls to agent ratio. Eligible callers will be given the option to request a callback after the music on hold finishes playing, which is nice. So um, yeah, if, if businesses are using that, I'm glad that that's coming. I hope everyone that is using it turns it on, because if I phone something and I just don't want to wait, I just want them to be able to call me back which is great. So number five of the top 10 new features coming out in August before we jump back to July is the apps are now supported in group chats with external users. So if you ever got frustrated being an external person in a group chat where like they're putting stuff in there, maybe using some of the other apps, and Microsoft is not great at documenting what you can and can't do as an external user. So sometimes like you're trying to just collaborate and it's not working, you don't know why. Actually, it's because of the ex, you know, it doesn't work with external people. Now, it sounds like they're fixing that. So you can now access applications in group chats with individuals outside your organization, allowing for improved collaboration and productivity. Group chat participants from the tenant hosting the chat can still remove or update applications for use by all members. All participants can use apps shared by people in other organizations in group chats hosted by those organizations. Wow. So basically, hopefully you can just ha use the apps that you're used to from an internal group chat with an external person. The installation of apps within these chats will adhere to the app policies of the organization that creates the chat. So if you get added as an external person and you've got loop turned off, if you're joining a group chat where the organization with a loop turned on, you'll be able to use loop is how I read that. Before we get move back into July, let me know what do you think of those first five. Let me know in the comments below which one's your favorite, which one are you excited to try out, 
which one has been long coming, let me know in the comments below. So now going back to July, now some of those features have come out, what was announced, or what Microsoft announced from July is custom emojis. So if we come into the chat with myself, put emoji, you come to emoji and then click on this new little icon down the bottom right hand corner, your organizations emojis. Bizarrely, it's not a custom emoji just for you. It's like adds it for the entire organization. So if you're doing something silly and adding something in, you might want to know that. So if you've got like, I don't know, something rude that you want to send to your mate in a chat, adding your custom emoji is going to add it for the whole organization. So that's going to uh, not be very funny quite quickly if you get uh, disciplined over that. Um, so just bear that in mind. The organization can turn off custom emojis if they want to, but let's have a go. So we'll add an emoji. If I pick my normal sort of social media icon this one ah nice so it's the, it's looking better than i thought it would to be honest which is cool so add emoji now i've got my little emoji that i can add in which is pretty cool, I think. It gives, nicely gives you a preview of what it's going to look like as a large one and a reaction. So I can also react to this post and do the same, use that same custom emoji, which is might be useful, probably a nice thing to do, but, uh, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Number seven was announced as a new feature. It's actually just a returning feature that got removed. Annoyingly, sometimes Microsoft does that and says, oh yeah, it's a new thing. It's like, actually, you, you broke it before. So when we move from Teams Classic, as they then renamed it, old Teams to new Teams, the thing that they broke but didn't really say explicitly is if you, the default behavior is if you reply to a thread in a channel, everyone above you in that thread gets notified that you've put a post in there, put a new po uh, reply in there. And then someone replies beneath you, you're added to that list of people that get notified by default for that entire thread, which is really useful if there's a short thread. If there's a long thread and the conversation moves on to something that actually you're not bothered about, or you just like threw in your 2p or 2 cents if you're in the US about that issue, but it's actually nothing really to do with you day to day. And then that thread continues for like hundreds of replies you want to be able to remove those notifications without turning off all notifications, throwing the baby out of the bathwater. So when we move to new teams, that's turn off notifications for a thread got removed for some reason. I don't know why, but it did. So you couldn't turn off notifications for a specific thread. You had to like turn off notifications for the whole channel or for the whole of teams, which was pretty annoying, or just accept that you're getting pinged about loads of stuff that's not relevant to you. Microsoft now brought that back. So if you are in a thread of information, uh, if you get at mentioned, you're still going to get notified. But if someone just does a reply and you're above them in that thread and you don't want to get notified about that thread anymore, you can click these three dots on that post at the top of the post and then turn off notifications for that entire thread. So that's a nice little uh, re-edition from Microsoft to fix what they had broken. Number eight is some again re-editions in my opinion for how teams meeting gallery works so i said the new meeting gallery provides you a simpler more predictable meeting presence while enabling you to personalize your view to suit your needs i would advise personalizing it because i think the defaults are just bizarre decisions so the new gallery places everyone in tiles of equal size whether their camera is turned on or off. Why would you want people with the camera off the same size as someone with the camera? Because then you're just reducing the amount of stuff that you can see. So you can you can turn that off. Well, the default gallery size is 16 participants. You can customize the number of participants visible on your screen up to 49 to fit your best preference. Microsoft seems to copy Zoom, which had loads of people on, but then didn't replace who was the latest person to speak like Teams did at the start, which I thought was a bad development. But now it says the new meeting gallery will automatically optimize the visibility of certain participants to improve meeting engagement, like those with raised hand and active speakers who 
you obviously want to see. So the fact that they removed that from when Teams first came out to now, it's good that it's that's coming back. You can also choose to prioritize participants who are on camera to better connect with your team. So reversing that default. So I'd recommend ticking that prioritize videos bit uh, in that drop down there. And additional customizable views available in the new meeting gallery include the ability to hide yourself from the main gallery or remove yourself from the main gallery. Not sure what the difference is between hide and remove, but uh, only visible to you. Again, that's a development that Microsoft copied from Zoom that I hate, don't need to see my video the same size as other people on call. And you can untick that and remove yourself from the main gallery, which I recommend doing. It just should just work like FaceTime, where I only need to see a tiny preview of me just to make sure my face is on camera. I don't need to see my own face. Uh, bad enough editing my own videos for YouTube. I don't need to see my own face that big when I'm on a video call with someone else, just distracting. Especially if there's only two of you, you're then the same size as someone else. It's like, that's just bizarre. So you can now turn that off, but I don't know why they, they made that default. Number nine, new feature whilst we're on video calling is that then when a Teams room joins a meeting, the video tile of that room automatically enlarges, which is, again, obviously, obviously what you'd want it to do. There was no way of doing that very easily or well before, and now it automatically does it, which is great because then it says remote attendees now have a clearer view into the room and can more easily spot who is speaking which uh, I've been on calls before where the meet, the, every, there's loads of other people outside the meeting, there's loads of people in the meeting room and they're so tiny that you can't then blow them up. It's like, it's really embarrassing that you can't see who's talking or, you know, especially if, you, if you've never met them before and then go into the office and try and see them. It's like, so they obviously know who you are because they can see your face really big on the meeting call and you can't see them because it was too small. And now that that's been fixed. And then last one, number 10 is speaker recognition and Copilot benefits are coming to Teams Rooms on Windows, although it does go, then go on to say that it's coming to Teams Room on Android and Teams Desktop for like when you take your laptop into a meeting room. But basically, well, when you're in a meeting room, the transcript is obviously really important for Copilot to work because it needs to know who's speaking. And if you're in a meeting room, it just says the meeting room is speaking, even if there's like 10, 20 people in the meeting room, you then, when you go to interrogate that in Copilot, Copilot doesn't know who's speaking. So Microsoft brought that into hardware, some bespoke hardware, and then I think the competition commission got involved and then said, well, actually, you don't need to do it on device because you know, all the meeting recording is in the cloud, all the transcript is done in the cloud anyway, Copilot's in the cloud, and uh, which I think is fair. Good benefit for us is then now that speaker recognition is coming basically to anywhere that you can have a Teams meeting room uh, uh, with multiple people in it. Um, so that's all coming into the cloud. So Microsoft's cloud-based intelligent speaker recognition analyzes the distinct vocal characteristics of each speaker, such as pitch, tone, and speaking style. First brought to Teams Room on Windows, a feature will expand to Teams Room on Android devices and the Teams desktop to bring your own device meeting spaces later this year. So that's good. Thanks for watching so far. Let me know what you thought of all the top 10 new features coming out in August, July, which one did you like the best, which one did you like the least? Let me know which uh, has been long coming. Let me know in the comments below. Before we leave, remember to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, it really helps in the algorithm. Click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified every time a new video comes out, at least once a week, if you want to keep up with all the latest stuff of Microsoft at work and help be more productive. If you need more help as an individual, consider joining the channel, support these videos keep coming out. There's three tiers. You can either just get quicker answers to questions in the comments of these videos. If you need any help, you can get early access to new videos coming out, or you can join the MeTime Mastermind, where we've got a range of courses that have sold previously between hundreds and thousands of pounds, all available for 50 pounds a month, as well as live access to me on group video calls once a week. So consider supporting the channel that way. If you need more help for your entire organization, consider booking a call using the link in the description below. Our most popular service is coming into an organization and seeing how people are working together and then recommending some ways that you could work better and get a plan sorted for you as a best next step. But thanks for watching so far and we'll see you in the next video.